Hello again and welcome to Finding a Partner, Seniors Over 60 with Carolyn. I'm Carolyn. Today we're going to get right to the point. I want to talk to you about the great increase in the number of marriages for men and women. Actually, um, the grooms are 25% higher now than in any time in our recorded history, and brides are over 21% now in any times over um, our recorded history. And I'm gonna to talk to you about that a little bit. Um, you can do the same research I do, and you can all go back to my uh, former video uh, presentations and look at the different issues involved here, roles, longevity, etc. But I do want to talk to you about a, a couple of other things. Men are more often inclined to marry over the age of 60 than are women. That works out pretty well for us because of the 72 or 73% of us who are single over the age of 60, 53 of us are females and the rest of us are males. So females, we way outnumber our eligible male partners. In our society, it appears that sometimes women are less eager to marry over 60 than are men. Is that a surprise to you? It was sort of a surprise to me, but in order to do this channel for you, I have to do my research. It seems that men are looking for someone to come home to, and women are looking for someone to go out with. This is something that I read just yesterday or today doing the research for this. Um, grooms over 65 find that several financial issues are resolved for them, as do brides over 65. For example, marriage sorts out the pensions. If you've been living with a partner for a good number of years and you have not married, um, one or both of you may have a pension that's going to be cast to the wind uh, if one of you pre when one of you precedes the other one in death and we assume that that is going to happen rather than both of you being hauled off to the funeral home on the same day at the same time. A lot of times people who've lived with a partner for a number of years wish their partner to have benefit of their pension for a couple of reasons. Number one, they've worked for that pension for many years. They don't want it to go to waste. It can't go to anybody else. It can't go to your, you can't uh, give it to your children or your grandchildren. It can only go to a surviving spouse. That's one of the reasons. Another reason is because you look after your spouse, you care about your spouse, married or unmarried, you want to look after them, they, you want them to have the monetary benefit of something that you have earned during this lifetime and you can leave to them to, to use for their infirmity and their old age too. It sorts all of that out. It sorts out something else too. It sorts out a 30 to 40% inheritance tax also. So if you uh, pass on as a single person, um, your heirs, uh, unless you're married to my understanding, um, may be hit with a 30 to 40% of an inheritance tax. Where if you're married and this automatically, it goes over into your spouse and uh, then your surviving spouse can deal with that. So there's some reasons for marriage, um, even when you are over 60. Another reason too, I don't want to forget from romance. Um, when we're teenagers, we have butterflies and bells and buzzers go out and we're so excited about finding someone and falling in love and having all of the excitement that goes along with that attraction and getting to know someone. And after many years of marriage, people sometimes get into a complacency and they're as comfortable with each other as an old worn out shoe and that's a wonderful thing. That is an absolutely marvelous thing. But if one of you precedes the other one in death, it's devastating and you're looking for something to remind you that you're still alive. And one of the things, the things that one of the things that can best do that is a new relationship and the excitement over that relationship. I heard from a woman not too long ago who told me that um, her 
um, her mother had passed on and her father was had recently met someone else. And the thing that she noticed immediately was that her father, who had been wearing the same old pair of ragged shoes from Walmart for the last 10 years, and who refused to give them up, uh, although he was chided by everybody in his family, including his children and his then wife, he would not give up these shoes. She noticed one, one day when she came to visit him that those shoes were in the garbage and she realized then that something had come up something different had happened to him and actually she went on to say that he bought himself a whole new wardrobe he grew himself a little bit of a beard uh, he had a new hairstyle maybe he started coloring his hair these things happen to people sometimes over 60 and it is delightful and it's wonderful if you are a single man or a woman over 60. And like me, you don't want to wake up alone for the rest of your life before they haul you off kicking and screaming to the nursing home or to the funeral home and you're looking to find a partner with whom to live the rest of your life. Tune in with me. There are many stumbling blocks that you have put up yourself to finding a partner. You may not even know what those stumbling blocks are. One of them is not knowing who you are. Another Another thing is not knowing, knowing for whom you are suitable. Another thing you don't take into consideration is what your family is going to think and if you want to please them or if you want to please yourself. So please join me every day. Tomorrow I have a text from a man who calls himself uh, ball and chained in Birmingham. Please check in with me tomorrow and we will hear the issues about Mr. Ball and Chained in Birmingham and we'll talk about finding a partner for seniors over 60 with Carolyn. Please subscribe. Talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye.